Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. This is video one of a series of videos on React Native and Expo. React Native helps you create mobile apps for both iOS and Android at the same time with just JavaScript. Unlike learning dedicated frameworks, React Native allows you to use familiar looking syntax from traditional web apps. Let's head on over to expo.io and let's find the Get Started button and click on that. We'll be skipping over the first step, but Snack is a really great interactive tool that allows you to test out code snippets. So you should definitely check that out on your own. To create a React or React Native project, you'll also need Node install. Let's click on the download button. This will bring you to the Node docs and just follow the steps to install the right version on your system. You can check if you have Node installed by simply typing node-version into your terminal. Once you've installed Node or checked if you have it, let's copy and paste this command into our terminal. You can run this from anywhere since the global tag signifies you're installing it globally. Let's pull up our terminal and paste it in. Okay, this is going to take a while, so let me speed the video up and maybe play some music for you. So the process is almost done, and I know you see a lot of warnings here, but just disregard them. Now that we installed the CLI, we can start creating React Native projects. Navigate to a folder where you want to create your project. I'm going to create a folder in Documents for all my React Native projects, and I'll just call it Projects. Now let's initialize a new Expo app by typing in Expo init, and let's choose a project name. I'm just going to choose My App. Let's choose blank from the menu, and our app will start to initialize. Let's make sure that our app was correctly created. And as you can see, there's only one folder called My App. Now let's list out the contents of My App and start the server. A window should automatically open with a dashboard for your Expo app. As you can see, there's multiple options to start different simulators. You can certainly run your app on a simulator right now if you know how to do that. But in my opinion, the quickest and easiest way to run your app is on a physical device, and Expo makes it really easy. Head on over to the App Store on your physical device. Expo is available for both Android and iOS. Let's just type in Expo into the search bar. It should definitely be one of the first options. If you don't already have Expo, you'll see a download button instead of an open button. Go ahead and download Expo and open it. Now go to the camera on your physical phone and scan the barcode that we saw earlier in the dashboard. That's pretty cool, right? Your app is now running on your phone. Now open the project in your favorite code editor. For me, that's VS Code. And let's take a look at the file structure. Here we have the Assets folder, which just holds images and the favicon. We have a Nodes Module folder that holds all the app dependencies like React and React Native. But the file that we're really interested in is app.js. And it contains everything that you see on your phone screen right now. Keep in mind, you might see something different than what I have on my screen right now. This file is auto-generated when we created our Expo app, and things change frequently with updates. Don't worry if it looks a bit different, the fundamentals stay the same. Here we have three imports. Status bar is something given to us by Expo, and we're going to remove that because we don't need it right now. Like all React apps, you can see here we have an import for React. Whenever you're using JSX syntax, you must import React. If you don't know what JSX is, it's the syntax that kind of looks like HTML. Next, we have three imports, stylesheet, text, and view. These are imported from the React Native library. These are special components and features that React Native gives to us. Text and view are components that are compiled to native platform widgets. Stylesheet, on the other hand, is an extra feature that helps with styling. Here in the main body of our function, 
we have some of those special components. First of all, let's get rid of status bar. We don't need that, as I said earlier. Okay, so what's a view? Well, you can think of a view as a wrapping component. You could see them kind of like you see divs in a normal web app. Text, on the other hand, well, I think that's pretty self explanatory. You just put text in it. Below, we're using the stylesheet.create method to create some styles. React Native does not have support for CSS. Instead, it uses a style syntax that looks similar to CSS, but it's actually just some more JavaScript. All right, let's start editing this file a little bit. First of all, let's remove the provided text and add some of our own. Here, I'm just going to write, hello, Marco. I know it's not the most creative, but it's a step up from Hello World. Let's add a button so we can interact with our app. Unlike a regular button, this is a self-closing tag, and you need to import it by adding it to the React Native import list. Let's add a title to our button. To do that, we have to set a prop on the button called title. All right, I think it's time to make this component a little more interactive. Let's start by adding state. We do this like in all other React apps, and let's import use state. If you're not familiar with this hook, check out my other video on use state. Link will be in the description. Let's deconstruct our value in our setter function. We're going to call these message and set message. Let's copy over our hard coded text in between our text tags and set that as our initial value. Now we can use our new message variable within our text tag. In a normal React app, you would use an event handler to make this button interactive. React Native gives us these types of event handlers. They're just named a little bit differently. We're going to use onPress on our button, which is very similar to onClick. The function you pass to onPress will fire every time the user clicks the button. Let's hop on over to our phone and see what happens when we press the button. I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. Next time, we'll make this app a lot more interesting. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel.